Still There is about the saddest dad to ever sad dad. It's a game that primarily wants to be about how not to go about the grieving process, as it follows a man who loses his daughter and responds to the loss by jettisoning himself as far out into space as humanly possible, away not just from anyone he's ever known, but anyone, period. Carl makes for a rather believable, if perhaps heavy-handed, examination of the pure stopping power of grief. But ultimately, what sold me on Still There was everything else revolving around that core. From a gameplay perspective, Still There is a pseudo-adventure-slash-puzzle game all about learning how to manipulate a complicated and confusing piece of machinery. But narratively, it ends up mostly being about two deeply broken individuals communicating across the vastness of space to literally the only other living people that can listen to them. And yeah, it's, uh, it's not a happy time, but it is a good one? As always, I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where I ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm gonna tell you if those were five hours well spent. And today, we're learning to operate the bento in Still There. I've gone through... a lot of feels playing this game. A lot of the time, the overriding emotion was frustration, and at regular intervals, it was exasperation. But there are a few golden moments in Still There where everything clicks, and when that happens, this game can suddenly feel oh so real and emotional. The main culprit for that is Still There's narrative, which has two primary throughlines. The first is focused on the main character, Carl, who's been crippled by the death of his daughter and just wants to be alone. So alone that he's flung himself to the far edge of space, where he works a dead-end gig as the sole operator of the space station Bento, with only a snarky AI and daily nightmares over his loss to keep him company. One day, however, Carl receives a distress call, which sets off our second narrative throughline. A woman named Elle is stranded in deep space in a ship that's gone kaput, and as the only person who's received her SOS in the past month, Carl works desperately to be this woman's sole lifeline and tries to move heaven and earth to get her rescued. The sci-fi rescue operation ends up being pretty interesting, and it pulled a switcheroo on me by setting up expectations for one common and easy-to-spot twist and replacing it with an entirely different one. What's less resonant is the game's focus on Carl's grief. The theme mostly gets explored by everyone else repeatedly telling Carl that he needs to step back and let go, and Carl going, no, I can't, until he finally gets his come-to-Jesus moment where he finally can. To be fair, this kind of tracks with how grief works sometimes, where you just keep sinking lower and lower until there's nowhere else to go, and your only option is to finally work through it. But the game's frequent confrontations with Carl's grief are a little on the simplistic and preachy side, often had me rolling my eyes a bit, and in one particular dream sequence, the script just went completely off the rails. But it's still important for the game's big finale. The dialogue on grief is utterly ham-fisted, but it eventually merges headlong with the sci-fi rescue operation into one coherent narrative to put some emotional stakes behind the physical ones. I'm obviously working hard to avoid spoilers here, but these two plotlines spend the majority of the game dancing around each other without ever quite connecting. But when they finally do collide in Still There's final hour, everything in this game's narrative suddenly clicks together and hits you like a truck. I had to take a minute after the credits had finished rolling, and it's a very rare game that can create that kind of response in me. But even though the narrative was what I liked best about Still There, it's still not the game's main selling point. That would be the gameplay. Still There's big mechanical hook is that the Bento Station is one giant alien machine. It's filled wall to wall with switchboards, screens, and electronic equipment, and the gameplay largely revolves around figuring out how to work said equipment. Every once in a while, an indie game like this comes out where the fun is exploring and slowly mastering a purposely obtuse and complex system through trial and error. But unlike many games like it, Still There isn't a game where you just poke every button on the console to figure out what they do. It feels more like trying to interpret the world's most complicated LEGO manual. The game's perfectly happy to tell you exactly what to do, but there's usually a blank somewhere or an obscured explanation that you have to figure out yourself. Sometimes this can end up feeling like the infamous spaghetti logic of an adventure game. Like when the game told me I had to replace a specific part on an oven to get it working again, but figuring out what to replace it with was the challenge. 
but far more often the game gives you plain, sometimes even step-by-step -step instructions, and you only have yourself to blame when you misinterpret them for 30 minutes because you missed one critical detail. Like with this puzzle that I ended up trying to do backwards for almost a full hour until I finally figured out that you can just look up one of these codes. There were times where I loved Still There's gameplay, and there were other times when I hated it. And when you're on the right track, the gameplay really clicks as you slowly sleuth out how to manage different parts of the bento. And what feel like overwhelming puzzles at the start become rote tasks within a few hours. But if you miss a clue or just find yourself stumped, the game will refuse to budge until you figure out what you're doing wrong. And perhaps just as damningly, there were multiple puzzles I solved entirely on accident. And I still don't quite know what I did to solve them, because I still don't entirely understand their underlying systems. Wait, 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 what? That, what? Go back. Oh, man, what? But to be fair to Still There, that frustration is also primarily on me. Because the game does offer you a button to make the solutions easier if you get stuck, and I could have easily clicked on it whenever I wanted to to save myself a lot of headache. But I was stubborn and trying to get that quote-unquote true experience out of the game, and in hindsight, I kind of wish I had decided to use that button, and if you're feeling tight on time, I recommend that you don't repeat my mistake. It's just not worth it. But what do you get out of five hours with Still There? If it wasn't entirely clear yet, I did get to finish this game, so the answer is the whole package. Especially if you're better at divining the solutions to each puzzle than I am. And while I spent a lot of time frustratedly bashing my head against the game's puzzles or rolling my eyes at overly simplistic speeches on grief, Still There ended on a really strong note. And ultimately, that note is what's been sticking with me. I waded through a lot of stuff that I did not particularly like about Still There, but what was waiting for me on the other side ended up being worth it. This game's conclusion was both beautiful and devastating, and for a full day afterwards, I couldn't even get my thoughts properly in order to talk about it. Ultimately, Still There has some pretty striking flaws, but anything that can create that genuine of an emotional reaction is absolutely worth playing. If you're looking for more weird-ass puzzles, last week's review of Super Liminals got you covered. And if you want to play Still There from a slightly different angle, check out Observation, which basically lets you be HAL 9000 for a space station. But I hope you enjoyed this first five review. If you did, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're looking for games that value your time and don't pad themselves, I'm your guy. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.